In our videos, we've explored miraculous healings, incredible conversions, and fascinating biographical insights from our beloved saint, Padre Pio. Well, today we're delving into a letter written by Padre Pio offering five tips for eternal happiness. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio. If you're new to our channel, Padre Pio was a Capuchin friar, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos and shorts five days a week, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint, and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. And now to our story. Today's profound guidance on leading a devout life is drawn from the book Letters Volume 3, Correspondence with His Spiritual Daughters. Within its pages, we find a letter Padre Pio wrote to Antonietta Vona, offering simple yet profound maxims to embrace in order to consistently live a devout Christian life. Now, although this letter was written in 1917 for his spiritual daughter, Padre Pio's advice remains remarkably relevant for our times. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the wisdom he shares is timeless. So let's dive right in and hear what Padre Pio had to say. The first wisdom I wish you to have is from Saint Paul. We know that all things work for good for those who love God. This is from Saint Paul's letter to the Romans. Since God possesses the ability to bring good even from evil, who will he do this for if not for those who, without any reservation, surrender themselves to him? Even sins from which God and his goodness protects us are orchestrated by his divine providence for the benefit of those who serve him. He then elaborates, If the holy King David had not sinned, he would never have acquired such profound humility, nor would Mary Magdalene have loved Jesus so ardently if he had not forgiven her many sins. Consider, my dearest daughter, this great work of divine mercy. He turns our miseries into blessings, and, with the poison of our sins, brings about healthy changes in our souls. Tell me then, what will he not do with his grace for our afflictions, our sufferings, and the persecutions that distress us? Even if you do not encounter any hardships, believe that if you love God with all your heart, everything will turn out for good. And even if you fail to understand how this good will unfold, be certain that it will. If God allows you to face challenging and disgraceful situations, it is merely to provide you with a clear vision and to make you admirable before his angels, presenting you as a worthy and pleasing spectacle. And here comes my favorite part, displaying Potter Pio's cleverness. Listen to this. And if God makes you fall, it is to achieve in you what he accomplished in St. Paul by making him fall from the horse. Oh, how I wish my falls were that just formative. But let's continue. Therefore, do not let the falls diminish your courage. Encourage yourself with renewed confidence and deeper humility. To lose heart and become impatient after falling into error is a tactic employed by the enemy. It is like surrendering your weapons and giving up. Therefore, you must not do it, as the grace of the Lord is always ready to help you. And with that, he concludes the first maxim. The second maxim that I hope you always keep in mind is that God is our Father. As a daughter of such a Father, there is nothing to fear, for not a single hair will fall from your head without His providence. It is truly remarkable that being children of such a father, our only thought should be to love and serve him. Take care of your soul and your family as he wants, 
and do not worry, because if you do this, you will see how Jesus takes care of you. Think of me, and I will think of you, Jesus once said to St. Catherine of Siena. The third maxim is that you should observe what the Divine Master taught his disciples. What has been lacking for you? Consider carefully, my good daughter, this passage. Jesus had sent the apostles to the whole world without money, without a staff, without sandals, without provisions, dressed only in a tunic. And then he asked them, When I sent you out, did you lack anything? And they answered that they lacked nothing. Profound words to live by, especially in our society, that always emphasizes the need for more possessions. Now I tell you, daughter, when you were tormented, even in the time when unfortunately you did not feel much confidence in God, tell me, did you ever find yourself overwhelmed by suffering? You will answer no, and why then, I will add, not have confidence in overcoming all other challenges? If God has not abandoned you in the past, how can He abandon you in the future, especially now when your desire to be His is stronger than ever? Do not fear that anything bad may happen to you in this world, because perhaps it will never happen. But in any case, if it were to happen, God will give you the strength to bear it. Recall how the Divine Master commanded St. Peter to walk on the waters. St. Peter, when the wind blew and the storm threatened, fear overcame him, and this almost made him sink. He asked for help from the Master, who rebuked him, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And reaching out his hand, he caught him. If God makes you walk on the stormy waters of adversity, do not doubt, my daughter. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Have courage, and you will be set free. The fourth maxim is that of eternity. It should matter little to the children of God to experience these fleeting moments, as long as they live eternally in glory with God. Daughter, consider that you are already on the path to eternity, that you have already set foot there, as long as eternity is happy for your sake, what does it matter if these passing moments involve hardships for you? Indeed, this life is just a blink of an eye in comparison to eternity. That's why I could never understand people who wish to sell their souls to the devil for some temporary gain, and then spend all eternity in hell. It just never made sense. But let's get to Padre Pio's final and most important maxim. The fifth maxim that I implore you to always keep fixed in your mind is that of the Apostle St. Paul. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep the crucified Jesus in your heart, daughter, and all the crosses of the world will seem like roses to you. Those who have felt the stings of the crown of thorns of the Savior, our head, do not sense the impact of other wounds in any manner. End of letter. Thank you for listening. Please do like and share this video to help our channel grow. And please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen. Or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories or our playlist of Padre Pio thoughts for the day. And don't forget to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. You'll find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.